Saha, he, Bhavan, your good self, Achayat, undertook, Gordam, Sabia, Yat Tapaha, meditation, Susam, Hihataha, in perfect discipline, Tina, for that reason, Kedayase, gives pain, Naha, ourselves, Twam, your good self, Para, the ultimate truth, Sankam, doubts, Cha, and Yachasi, giving us a chance. Translation perfect language, easy like Raman Swami Shapavada Kija. Yet we are moved to wonder about the existence of someone more powerful than you when we think of your great austerities and perfect discipline, although your good self is so powerful in the matter of creation. Please repeat, yet we are moved to wonder about the existence of someone more powerful than you when we think of your great austerities in perfect discipline, although your good self is so powerful in the matter of creation. For following in the footsteps of Sri Narada Muni, one should not blindly accept his spiritual master as God himself. A spiritual master is duly respected on par with God, but a spiritual master claiming to be God himself should at once be rejected. Narada Muni accepted Brahma as a supreme due to Lord Brahma's wonderful acts in creation. But doubts arose in him when he saw that Lord Brahma also worshipped some superior authority. The Supreme is Supreme and he has no worshipable superior. The Angrohopasita, or the one who worships himself with the idea of becoming God himself, is misleading. But the intelligent disciple can at once detect that the Supreme God does not need to worship anyone, including himself, in order to become God. A hungrahopasana may be one of the processes for transcendental realization, but the hungrahop it's a tongue twister this one. A hungra hopashita can never be God himself. No one can becomes God by undergoing a process of transitional realization. Narada Muni thought of Brahmaji as the supreme person, but when he saw Brahmaji engage in the process of transitional realization, doubts arose in him. So he wanted to be clearly informed. Just ask for the blessings of the senior devotees so we can present the proper Siddhanta. Srimad Bhagavatam. This word, Ahangra uh, Hopasita, uh, in the Veda base um, of all of Prabhupada's works, this is the only time he ever uses this word. And when I Googled it, the only place it comes up is in this purport. So, um, interesting. Uh, I think it may have something to do with like the uh, Pashana. I think that's like a Buddhist meditation or Pashana. So something like that. But anyway, so this is, um, of course, Narada Muni offering prayers to Lord Brahma. And these are being recited by uh, Sugadev Goswami Tamaraj Prichit. So I think there's six questions altogether that... Um, Narada Muni presents to Lord Brahma and just a synopsis of those questions he's asking that what is that transcendental knowledge about the jiva and the super soul the, the, the spirit soul and the super soul how is the world created and maintained and under whose control is it and what is the source of your knowledge and power and creative ability is there someone more powerful than you you seem to be self-sufficient to create like the spider, independently creating a web. And then we've got today's verse. So, um, 
You know, so he's, he's sort of asking, well, you seem to be the most powerful, but I see that you're performing austerities. So why is that? Why would you perform austerities if you're the supreme already? So some doubts are coming there. So it's interesting. This Prabhupada, the first comment Prabhupada makes is that um, uh, one should not blindly accept his spiritual master as God himself. A spiritual master is duly respected on par with God, um, but a spiritual master claiming to be God himself should at once be rejected. So we understand the spiritual master to be the via medium to be able to achieve um, uh, Krishna's lotus feet. So when we chant Mongolati prayers in the morning, uh, Yasha Pashada, Bhagavat Pashada, that um, it's only through the mercy of the spiritual master can we achieve the mercy of Krishna. But we're not thinking that Guru and Krishna, or Guru and God, are on the same level. Um, you have this group, uh, Swami Narayan group, all very nice. Uh, you know, very sincere devotees, but they, they have this idea that they say that, um, I mean, they're repeating Sasha, uh, Guru and God are one. So it's a fact, Guru and God are one, but it's not that they're on the same level. They have the same mission, they might have the same mood, um, etc., in that they're trying to bring the conditioned souls back to Krishna. But on their altar, they have the Guru and Narayan standing together on the same level. So it's sort of like impersonalism, you know, it's a misunderstanding of Guru and God are one. They're, they're not actually one on the same level. Um, uh, so Prabhupada is emphasising that, that we see the spiritual master, um, He's the via medium to achieve God. He doesn't become God himself or he's not God. And anybody who claims to be God should be rejected. So we're all aspiring to be the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. So the spiritual master, he's showing that himself, that he's the servant of Krishna. He's not equal to. So it's an important point. Otherwise we get this sort of impersonalism, Mayavad, that everyone, everything is one like that so and um it actually comes up in bhagavad gita that um arjuna he was a very good friend of krishna they were sort of equal age externally they were equal age and they used to go you know uh, riding together and eating together and resting on the same couch together and they were very intimate friends but when he become bewildered on the battle of Kuru, etc that i'm going to have to you know, uh, enter into battle with all my relatives and cousins who are on the opposing side. Um, he becomes bewildered. So he says, Krishna, please um, instruct me. Now I'm your disciple. And um, at that point, that whole mood of friendship changes. Um, that Krishna says, no more joking words now. You know, now this is serious. You want me, you want to be my disciple? Uh, you need to accept my instruction. We're not equals anymore. So it changes the whole mood of the narration of Bhagavad Gita that uh, Arjuna accepts the position of a disciple rather, as e rather than equal friend. Um, so in that way Krishna can give him proper instruction and Krishna will take it seriously. He won't just take it lightly as, you know, conversation between friends. So... Um, this whole sort of pastime manifest thing that Narada Muni is seemingly a little bit bewildered because he's a liberated soul and a liberated soul doesn't become bewildered but it seems like he's not properly understanding who Lord Brahma is. Lord Brahma is his father but he's thinking, is he the supreme? And so you can hear that the questions he's presenting, doubts, you seem to be the supreme, or you know, where does your power come from? Why you're performing austerity, but you are so powerful that, you know, you, although your good self is so powerful in the matter of creation. So it can be asked, where does this, um, confusion arise from so further on we hear in the in the 10th 10th verse actually that um uh Prabhupada brings up that this is the influence of yoga maya 
and he, he says in that same purport that it's exactly the same situation of Arjuna. Arjuna is also a liberated soul. He's an eternal um, uh, associate of Krishna. So how does he become bewildered? He's, a, he's a, one of the most powerful Kshatriya warriors on the battlefield and their duty is to fight and to kill the enemy. But he sees on the opposing sign his so-called relatives, friends, uh, spiritual masters, etc. And he becomes bewildered through compassion. And uh, Krishna chastises him, says, you know, you're a, you're a powerful warrior. Where is this, you know, idea coming from that you need to be compassionate to, to the enemy? And so it's understood through Yogamaya, um, Krishna enables his whole pastime so he can speak the Bhagavad Gita. So in the same way, Yogamaya here also um, is arranging so that Lord Brahma can present uh, to us through the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam the real um, the reality that Lord Brahma, he's the first living being in this universe, but he's simply himself another um, humble servant of Krishna that he's not the supreme personality um, you know quite often you hear particularly in the um, sort of Hindu tradition that they're thinking all the demigods are one they're all supreme or Shiva supreme or this is supreme there's a lot of confusion like that but um, so therefore we're very fortunate that Srila Prabhupada is presenting the reality that Krishna is the supreme person and everybody else including even Lord Brahma is the humble servant. So Yoga Maya, she, um, uh, she, she makes this arrangement um, and so many times apparently bewilders the liberated soul so all these different pastimes can go on. Mm. So um, in the fourth chapter of Titania Chattamita Adi Leela, Prabhupada uh, gives some short explanation of this Yoga Maya. So Yoga Maya in Krishna Leela, what is her name? Purnamasi. Purnamasi. So Yoga Maya is the name of the internal potency that makes the Lord forget himself and become an object of love for his pure devotee in different trends and mellows. This Yoga Maya potency creates a spiritual sentiment in the minds of the damsels of Raj, the gopis of Vrindavan, by which they think of Lord Krishna as their paramour. So Yoga Maya, she is engaged in arranging all the different pastimes to give pleasure to Krishna and his devotees. <coughs> So we understand Purnamasi is actually an expansion of Srimati Radharani. Purnamasi is one of Krishna's internal potencies and her constant occupation, engagement, is to bring pleasure to Krishna and the devotees by arranging every day. She has so many different assistants and associates and uh, every day they're working out. You know, just like this festival is coming up and uh, this weekend and so many devotees have been planning you know minute to minute hour to hour day to day what's going to happen so this is yoga maya constantly with krishna and the devotees and sometimes yoga maya she, she covers over the uh, the minds of the devotees so that certain pastimes can go on um, he also, Prabhupada mentioned in the letter 1968 that Yoga Maya means the mercy of the Supreme Lord which connects the devotee in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So it's like the via medium um, by which um, uh, the devotees can understand Krishna in the particular mellow that they're, that they're attached to. You know, that we see um, when Krishna first appeared in Mathura to his, his um, parents Vasudeva and Devaki. He appeared in the forearm like majestic Narayan form and they paid their obeisances and they offered prayers as the Supreme Lord. Um, so that was their particular rasa, like parental rasa but, but more in the mood of Aishvarya of awe and reverence. But then when Krishna was taken to Vrindavan, because Devaki, Vasudev, they were 
thinking that this is our son and we have to look after him. That was their particular mood towards Krishna, parental mood. So to look after Krishna, they took him to Vrindavan, put him in the care of um, or, um, Nandagram, uh, under the care of um, uh, Jasoda and Nanda. So Jasoda and Nanda also on the parental rust, but it was a bit more intimate that they didn't see Krishna as the supreme person. They just saw him as a son. And uh, we have to look after him like, like a normal son. And uh, even when Krishna performed amazing pastimes, even very young killing demons, you know, they, they're sort of wondering, who is that son? But, uh, but, but straight away, Yogamaya covers again. And, um, you know, because as soon as they're thinking in the mood of awe and reverence, Aishvarya is Krishna is God like that, then immediately their mood is, is um, uh, sort of restricted, perhaps you could say. It's uh, like the full the full blow and mellow of that transcendental rust that, that Nanda and Jasoda have for Krishna would be lessened if they were thinking that he is God. So you have that pastime when Uddhava, Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan because he heard that the gopis, they were practically ready to give up their bodies because even though when Krishna left to go to Mathura, he said, very soon I'll be back, but that he actually never came back. And so all the residents of Vrindavan are so, um, you know, like ready to give up their bodies. They're, they're missed in such um, uh, separation from Krishna. So at one point, one of his most intimate devotees, Uddhava, Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan. And he saw that um, everybody was crying, constantly crying. And so Uddhava, thinking he's doing the right thing, he said, look, look, please don't cry. Actually, Krishna is not your son. Krishna is actually God. And all the residents looked at each other and they started crying even louder. And they said, we just thought we had lost our son. Now you saying we lost Bhagavan. <laughs> and they even crying more. And then Uddhava understood that actually um, the perfection of life is to cry for Krishna. You know, and, and actually Nanda Baba, he chastised it of a, you're just a young boy, you don't understand these things, you know. So, um, of course, sort of a, he was sent, um, another reason he was sent to um, Vrindavan was so that uh, Krishna wanted Uddhava to understand how deep the gopis' love was for him. Um, and so Uddhava actually understood that, that they were just constantly immersed in such deep separation of spiritual love for Krishna. So Uddhava, that was a lesson for Uddhava to learn. Mm. So, um, uh, with um, Yoga Maya, the, the different stories that come up, because there's so many different stories, because Yoga Maya is always active, but just a couple that come to mind that um, just through the influence of Yoga Maya, Narada began to develop a sort of transcendental envy for Sanatan Goswami, because whenever he went to Braj, he saw that Sanatan Goswami was, everybody was worshipping him, wherever he went, uh, everybody was just falling flat on the ground and offering obeisance to Sanatan Goswami and they were just offering everything to Sanatan and just crowding around and listening to the nectar coming out of his lips and um, so after so sort of Narada Moon a bit of trains and envy well, why is everyone worshipping Sanatan Goswami like that so at one point uh, Narada Muni he went to Vaikunda and saw Vishnu and said, my Lord, I have a bit of a query here. So this is Nan Goswami. Why is everybody worshipping like that all the time? And so Vishnu, he says, Narada, I want you to go back down to Govardhan Hill and do one thing for me. You get a, a cup of water full and put it on your head and you walk around Govardhan Hill without spilling a drop. And when you finish that, come back and see me. So Narada thought, I want to know about Sanan Goswami. Now I'm walking around Govardhan Hill with a cup of water. Anyway, he, he, he followed that instruction. 
and uh, so he managed to do that you know I mean it's about four six hours to walk around Govardhan Hill and uh, water on the head and so he went back to see Lord Vishnu and Lord Vishnu said um, so I did that my Lord I didn't spill one drop and um, and Lord Vishnu said so while you're walking around how many times did you think of me and he said well I wasn't thinking of you I was just making sure I wasn't dropping the water and he said that is the difference Sanatan Goswami never forgets me even for a moment like that so in this way you know Yoga Mai makes that more arrangement just so that his um, you know Christian devotees can be glorified there's another story also that uh, directly with uh, uh, Purnamasi that um, I was on uh, Prikrama with some devotees led by uh, Dina Bandhu Prabhu and Vrindavan some years ago and we were walking on the road from um, Vrindavan to Mathura and he said just over there that, that kund there I, I just can't remember what it's called now but uh, there was a kund there and said this is where Kamsa actually entered into Vrindavan uh, or tried to enter Vrindavan so he explained that you know so many demons were sent by Kamsa to kill Krishna and so you might be thinking why didn't Kamsa just do it himself because obviously these demons are actually extremely powerful sort of dem demoniac mystic yogis but Kamsa actually defeated all those himself and subjugated them into his service and in that way he sent them to kill Krishna so if he was so powerful to defeat these demons that they were killed by Krishna why didn't Kamsa just do it himself so that was the question that Dinamandu presented and he said actually he did he did try the first time he did go and he got to where that kund was and suddenly this elderly gopi appeared of course we know it was Purnamasi this elderly gopi appeared and uh, said who are you what are you doing here because he was dressed as a king you know all the regal robes and crown etc and normally in Vrindavan everybody is just cowherd you know just simple dress so immediately he stood out you know of course yoga Maya knew everything she knew who he was but um, and uh, he said I'm King Kamsa and I'm going to kill Krishna and immediately Purnamasi grabbed him and threw him into the kund and when he got out he was in the form of a gopi a young gopi like that whole form and dress had been changed and so Kamsa's looking at himself what did you do what's happening who are you and um, uh, and Purnamasi said you're a gopi now therefore you need to be engaged in the service of a gopi nobody is unemployed in Vrindavan and so all these other young gopis started gathering around to see what was going on you know like in India anything happens immediately there's a hundred people standing around to see what's going on and so um, so Purnamasi told these gopis so here's your new gopi engage him engage her and um, so the gopis just sort of started giggling you know young girls and they said so what what can you do and you know Kamsa was thinking well he's a king you know he, he knows nothing about being a cow herd or you know living in a village he's just used to royal opulence and so they said okay well we'll teach you how to make um, cow dung patties you know you see the cow dung patties they use for cooking fire and comes her in the form of the gopi you pick up that cow dung and you put a little bit of soil in it and you make patties and you stick it on the wall so come so I mean what choice did he have you know he, he's a gopi now he has to learn to be a gopi so uh, but he was very bad at it because he used to be a king you know a king last thing a king does is make cow dung patties so that made all the young girls laughing even more so he's trying to make cow dung patties and 
you know, making a big mess of it and all these young girls giggling and laughing and making fun of him. And he's, oh my God, what's happened? How, how did this happen? And then after a while, Purnamasi come back, picked him up, threw him in the kund and he come out and he was Kamsa again. And Purnamasi said, if I see you again, I'm going to kill you. And in that way, Kamsa, he left. So, so that was an amazing story that um, Dina Bundy told us. So, so in that way, he, he never dared come to Vrindavan again. And of course, you know, other stories like um, uh, at Brahmananda Ghat, when you do Vajmandal Krikama, you, you go through Brahmananda Ghat, very peaceful area of, of Braj actually and uh, right on the right on the river um, Jamuna and it was there that uh, Krishna and his friends were were playing and um, all the all his friends came to Mother Jasoda said Krishna he's been eating um, dirt and uh, Mother Jasoda he asked Krishna said I've heard you've been eating dirt uh, is that true he said no no just friends they, um, they were just angry with me and they just, they're just making stories. And Mother just said, open up your mouth. I want to see if there's dirt in your mouth. So when he opened it up, she saw the whole universal form there. So, you know, we know this story, but um, so this is Yogamaya. And for a moment, uh, Mother Jasoda think, who is my son? You know, how can my young boy do like this? So for a while, is, you know, is he a demigod? Is he in her iron? But as, as we said, um, as soon as that sort of mood of Aishvara enters, immediately it, it, it sort of restricts the, um, you know, that, that mood of love, that intimate mood parental us. So immediately Yogamaya covered over Jasoda and once again, he, she saw Krishna as just her naughty little boy who's been eating dirt, like that. So, um, in so many ways, you know, we know these different stories that um, uh, Yoga Maya is constantly um, by herself and with so many um, of her sort of associates making all these wonderful arrangements um, just for the pleasure of Krishna and the gopis. Mm. So it's also with these questions, um, I think in the uh, text 10, just a few texts onwards, uh, Prabhupada mentions that um, when the devotee is asking uh, questions or talking between themselves, this sort of, this is also Krishna within the heart. Um, I think the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek in theos, which means the God within. So enthusiasm comes from super soul, you know, Krishna inspires us from within. And so uh, particularly for devotees, we start talking about Krishna, we get more and more inspired to talk and that, you know, the pleasure of speaking about Krishna, you know, and after a while you just don't want to stop, just that pleasure is like that. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna specifically mentions that at 10.9, it's one of the um, Bhagavad Gita Chaita Sloki verses, the seed verses of Bhagavad Gita 10.8 to 10.11. Uh, he says, "Amat chida mat gata prana bude anta paras param kate antas cham chamam ni chams tushanti charimanti cha." He says, "The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me; their thoughts are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction, bliss from always enlightening one other and conversing about me." So, with Narada Muni presenting these questions to Brahma, you know, there's pleasure on both sides, and actually, further on, Lord Brahma congratulates. Narada Muni, that's a, you know, thank you very much for asking these questions. You know, there's pleasure both from the one who, who asks the questions and the one who's answering. So when you get um, devotees together and talking about Krishna pastimes, you know, there's so much pleasure there. So in this verse, in the purport, um, Prabhupada mentions that these pure devotees, their talks are solely on transcendental subjects. Devotees of the Supreme Lord are 24 hours daily, engaging, glorifying the qualities and pass on Supreme Lord, and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. So at the end of the purport, um, Prabhupada mentions that Lord Titania, he likens his transcendental devotional service of speaking about Krishna, uh, he likens it to sowing uh, a seed in the heart of a living entity. 
So um, of course with the seed you need fertile soil, you need some sun, you need the water. So this talking about Krishna, this uh, Shravanam Kirtanam hearing and chanting, this is like um, nourishing and fructifying that seed. And so um, of course he, he was sort of paraphrasing the first from um, Chaitanya Chattermita that Brahmananda Brahmatea Kona Bhagavan achieved Guru Krishna Prasadi Paya Pakti Lada Beach that, um, that uh, there are innumerable living entities moving throughout all the different universes, uh, different planets, and out of them, a few who are very fortunate actually they come in contact with devotional service or a pure devotee, and from that chance um, they're able to understand devotional service the bhakti lada beach becomes to be fructified like that so um so, so i think it's in lagu bhagam rita by rupa goswami he also mentions like how does one become fortunate you know this verse says the the, the bhagavan the one who is fortunate so how does one become fortunate um so Rupa Goswami, he mentions that life after life, we can be performing what's called agata sukriti, or unknowingly performing devotional service. We don't realize we're doing it, but somehow or other, it's, it's, it's um, uh, not devotional service, pious activity. Um, and slowly, slowly, the heart becomes purified through that pious activity. And so that, that purification, actually Radharani in the form of Haladini Shakti, she starts to enter into the heart of that fortunate soul. And so, so slowly, slowly the material propensity has been replaced by Haladini Shakti as the pious activities life after life accrue, the benefit of that accrue. Until the point when one comes in contact with, you know, devotional service, gets gets a book, hears the Harinam, you know, there's a change of heart happens, and um, uh, at that point, one is sort of qualified to to take up devotional service. And we see, you know, everybody has their different story of how they come to Krishna consciousness. Some people, it was like almost immediately, you can understand from a previous life, they got to the point where their heart is, you know, pure enough. So when they come in contact with Krishna in one form or another, that they're just ready to, you know, to embrace it. And, um, uh, and for others, uh, it may take much longer and um, you know you get personalities who you know we used to call them the Sunday feast buckters that they don't do any service they don't seem to do anything except just come to Sunday feast I mean nothing wrong with that but but they sort of don't go any further but at least they're not going backwards either but accruing so much pious activity uh, the result of that pious activity and they're hearing the holy name taking prashad so at least in the next life they're you know they're well on their way you know coming closer and closer to Krishna mm. so so these are just some points that come to mind with this verse so uh, as the chapter goes on, Lord Brahma, as I said, he congratulates Narada Muni for these questions. And because Brahma realised this is an opportunity for me to uh, reveal to Narada Muni and to the world through the Bhagavatam the reality that I'm, uh, even though I seem to some that I am the supreme creator, I am so powerful, actually I'm just a humble servant. And Prabhupada does mention, I don't know if it's here or somewhere else, I read that this Lord Brahma of this universe, he's actually the youngest Lord Brahma. Out of all the Lord Brahmas, he's the youngest. But nevertheless, some people may think that he, he's the, you know, the most powerful, you know, according to the questions Narada Muni presents, that, uh, you know, you seem to be, you know, you know the confusion there, as we said, Yoga Maya, but it seems to be a confusion. Are you the Supreme? You're performing austerities, but you seem to be able to, you know, independent like that. So, so it's an opportunity for Lord Brahma to present, um, you know, the, the ultimate conclusion that he's a humble servant and Krishna is the Supreme Person. All right, we'll end there. Thank you very much. Is there any questions or comments at all? Yes, Tom. Just actually, while we're waiting for the microphone, um, I've just got a quick excerpt from 
uh, numbered with Mahatma, which explains, as we know in Vrindavan Leela, Purnamasi is Yoga Maya. But um, in Nubbard Whip, there's also a um, uh, Yoga Maya. So I'll just read it. It's quite interesting that, um, like Parvati, Lord Shiva's wife, she is lamenting to Krishna that she's always outside of Krishna's pastimes. When will she ever get Krishna's mercy like that? So, um, so she's presenting this lamentation to Lord Titania. So, um, Gora Chandra, Lord Titania was pleased, and he said to Parvati, "O Supreme Goddess, listen carefully to my words. You are my energy, and you're not separate or different from." me. My one energy has two forms within the spiritual kingdom. My original energy has one form as Shirada. But for carrying out activities in the material world, she has expanded herself as you. Without you, my Leela could not be accomplished, for in the form of Yoga Maya, you are necessary in my pastimes. In Braj, you are eternally present as Purnamasi, and in Navadweep, you are present as Prada Maya, along with Chechapal, Lord Shiva, guardian of the Dham. Saying this, Garanga disappeared and Parvati become overwhelmed with love. So Parvati stays in one form um, in Navadweep area as the goddess of Samantadweep, and in another form as Prada Maya in Mayapur. So that's an interesting point. Yes, Tom. Just keep it away a bit. Oh, yeah. um, so, um, in regards to this... He's just going to turn it in. Okay, <laughs> okay. You're, good. you're good to go. Hello. Um, so, in regards to this service, um, how can we keep it fresh? Because I've noticed after a uh, few months that enthusiasm seems to wean off. Well, I can speak for myself anyway. It seems to have weaned off somewhat from, from myself. Um, but when I come here and amongst um, such exalted Vaishnavas, I feel quite uplifted. So how can I um, carry on that spirit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I um, mean, you can only run on raw enthusiasm for so long. You know, in the beginning it's raw enthusiasm, but after a while knowledge has to develop, knowledge and devotion, so that you're not simply doing it out of enthusiasm, but you have a deep knowledge why you're doing it. And of course, you know, Krishna had to keep everything fresh. He's Navayuvanam, he's ever fresh, ever eternal. So he's the one we're trying to approach. So we constantly, we keep ourselves under the umbrella of Lord Titania saying it's our movement and we're going to take on that same uh, eternal freshness, so to speak. You know, like, but association devotees are essential, you know. So, um, but it's not that we're always able to get, you know, really enthusiastic kirtans all the time, but at least with knowledge and study and attentive to our japa each day, we're keeping in contact with the association of Krishna and everything will stay ever fresh. But if we start taking everything for granted or become a, a bit complacent, then that freshness will disappear to one degree or another. So we have to always be um, you know, attentive to our daily sadhana. That's why that program's there, you know, because Kali Yuga memory we forget very quickly. You know. okay. Yes, uh, Alex. I just wanted to, uh, just to clarify, just for myself. So, um, the external illusory energy, yoga maya, is always an expansion of the internal pleasure potency, maha maya. Is that right? No, well, maha maya is the external potency, yoga maya is the internal potency. Yoga maya is the internal. Yeah. Yeah. So what we've been talking about is Yoga Maya, that's expansion of Radharani. Of course, Maha Maya is also, but she's the external. She's the one who covers us over, yeah. you know, and uh, thinking we're the body and in ignorance, etc. But yeah. Yoga Maya was covering over, doing 
Sounds like Yogi Maya was doing Maha Maya's job. Well, well, in a sense, you could say that, but the result is completely different. She's covering over the the for the pure devotees to to um, manifest the different leelas of Krishna like that. Whereas Maha Maya, she just covers us with ignorance. Yeah. yeah. So one is spiritual, one is material. Yoga Maya is spiritual. And Mahamaya, she works on the external material platform. The, the fact that she's covering over yeah. the reality of the situation. Yeah, yeah, but that, that, that's, that, that's to, um, so that the Krishna Leela can manifest. And, uh, you know, I mean, Krishna, he's more pleased when he's got his parents looking after him as a, as a child rather than, you know, devotees are worshipping him with awe and reverence. Yeah. You know that that the more intimate it is, the more pleasing it is. Yeah, yeah. So as we read from the Navuri Mahama Parvati, she is Mahamaya. You know, but um, uh, but in Navuri Leela, she plays the role of Prada Maya, like as Yoga Maya in the Dham. Yeah. So it's a little bit technical, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any anything else? Anyone else? This time. Uh, should should we treat Diksha and Siksha on the same level? Should we have the same uh, veneration um, as such for them? Yes, yeah, practically the same. I mean, one we take initiation from, but we're receiving instruction from both, and we can accept Siksha and Diksha as to be on the same level as non-different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, for the pure devotee, you could say it's Yoga Maya. For the non devotees, it's Mahamaya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Arjuna, he forgets who he is through the influence of Yoga Maya. Narada Muni forgets who he is through the influence of Yoga Maya. So those pastimes can go on. But in the material world, you know, we forget that we're the spirit soul and, you know, we think we are the body through that same influence, but that's Mahamaya. You know, intelligence and uh, remembrance is taken away by Mahamaya. Yeah, yeah so uh, both, you know, memory, knowledge, intelligence, but for the pure devotee, liberated soul and the conditioned soul, it operates differently. The result is the opposite. One is, you know, liberating, the other is conditioning. Yeah. Makes sense? <laughs> Last question, anybody else? Yes, Vaishnavi. I was going to ask, but you mentioned about how um, we have the principle of the internal energy organized and mm. external Mahamaya. Mm. We see that even in our as aspiring devotees in our life, it doesn't mean that we're not influenced by Mahamaya. Mm-hmm. So um, that understanding is not about that we are Yeah, well, we have the uh, nine process of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, etc. So that's the recommendation. So whether we're doing one, two, or all nine, that's the recommendation Bhagavatam is giving us. That, um, you know, we're, we're chanting, hearing about Krishna, we're offering prayers, we're doing deity worship, um, um, and ultimately surrendering everything. So these are the nine recommended processes. But, you know, everybody has a particular propensity and, you know, each of those nine processes, there's an exemplary personality that, um, you know, displays that particular, you know, like 
Um, hearing is much Priksha and chanting is Sukadev Goswami, etc. So we can just follow the example of these personalities. Um, but ultimately, you know, if we're around devotees, we're, we're, we're sort of going to be engaged in service to one degree or another because the influence of the association devotees can be very powerful. So, but the main thing is that every day we're doing something to remind us of Krishna and then we're in a secure position. Um. All right, we'll end there. Thank you very much. Bhagavatam, Kijai, Slipapad, Kijai.